How's it going, folks? Welcome back to the channel. This is each one, reach one, praying and hoping that I can teach and reach one with this lesson, Lord willing. Thank you for joining me today. Let us give all praise, honor, and glory to where it belongs, to none other than the highest, our Abba Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to our King Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Again, I appreciate you guys joining me today for this walk in righteousness. We're going to go ahead and dive into the scriptures to get some more of the promises in the prophecies. All right. To add to the series that we call Prophecy and Promise. We're trying to understand the Most High God. We're trying to understand the Old Testament in order to understand the New Testament and the promises spoken of by the apostles, the disciples and by Christ, the King himself. All right. So um, we are picking up in Micah chapter four. The subject matter of this chapter, is peaceful latter days concerning Israel, peaceful latter days. We are destroying and tearing down the strongholds and the lying doctrines of Christianity that state um, that the Israelites of old have been replaced with the new Israelites. And the new Israelites, who they call spiritual Israel, are the Christians who believe in Christ. Anyone who believes in Christ, <clears throat> you are a Christian. And because you are a Christian, you get to replace the biblical Israelites, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what they say. We are proving that that is a fallacy. It is a falsehood. It is a lying, evil, wicked, satanic doctrine. Many do not understand that because they believe their church leaders. They don't believe their church leaders have a reason to lie to them. And, you know, as humans, what we have a tendency to do is, is to defer to people who we believe are more knowledgeable on the subject. That's natural. I've done it coming into this Israelite awakening. When I first came into it, I deferred to the, the knowledge of the people, the men who have been awakened longer than I have, who seem, you know, as if they, they had it all down and they, they had it together. I deferred to them because I was in no place to argue with them. I was in no, no place to no position to contest anything they were saying. So I was a babe. I was in need of instruction. But there came a time when I was no longer a babe. The training wheels were taken off and the Most High dealt with me one-on-one. -on -one. He poured his spirit upon me and he gave me no longer, uh, no, no more a need for those teachers. He taught me personally. And so now I have a better understanding. I have a wider range of understanding. And a lot of what I understand now, you know, is also contrary to things that I, what, that I was taught when I first came in. And I'm OK with changing my position because I follow the truth. I don't follow men. And that's what you have to do. You have to make a decision. Do you want to follow the king? Do you want to follow God or do you want to follow men? It wasn't even a decision to make for me. I went where the Holy Spirit led me. What are you going to do? Micah chapter four, verse one. But in the last days, it shall come to pass. So we are setting the scene, the last days. All right. It shall come to pass, meaning this is a promise. This is a guarantee that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. The mountain of the house of the Lord, that's the elect, that's the 144,000, shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. What are they going to do? They're going to say, come and let us go to the, the house of the God of, of the Christians. No, let's go to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the law shall go forth of Zion, not of the Christian church. The law shall go forth of Zion. The Israelites will be the lawgivers. The Israelites will be the governors, the kings, and the priests of Christ. All right, the servants of God. So they will, we will be the ones responsible for the service of God, as stated by Paul in Romans chapter 9. Right? He says, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. All right. It's not going to go forth from wherever the Christians are congregated. It's going to go forth from where the Israelites are. It's going to go forth 
from Jerusalem, from Zion. All right. Zion, Israel has not been replaced, will not be replaced and hold a key position, a key role in latter day prophecy. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. You heard you heard this mentioned in, in Ezekiel. All right. We're going to get to Ezekiel. All right. So keep this in mind and build upon, you know, the previous lessons. All right. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Now, that should be a great indicator to you that this prophecy has not been fulfilled. War is still taking place in the earth. So we are still waiting for the fulfillment of this scripture, right? Okay, so everything that's been said here that is going to happen, it's going to happen, including the part that says the law shall go forth of Zion. He's not going to change his mind about that. He didn't write this and speak this a long time ago. And then, you know, when Christ came and you know, and not all of Israel accepted him and loved him and revered him that the Most High God decided to change his mind. No, he knew before this was ever written that we're reading right now, he knew that in the time of his son, that many would reject him. All didn't reject him, but many did. And he knew that aforetime. And he made the prophecy anyway. All right. He was not taken aback. He was not taken by surprise. He was not fooled by anything that happened. It is impossible for men to do anything that the Most High God does not see coming. He accounts for it. He accounts for everything that we're going to do in his prophecies, in his promises. He already knows. And he shall judge among many people. Right? And rebuke strong nations afar off. <clears throat> and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore, but they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. For all people will walk every one in the name of his God, small g, and we will walk in the name of Yahweh, our God, forever and ever. Why did he say this? What is he saying exactly? He says, for all people, for all the other nations of the earth, all the non-Israelite nations will walk everyone in the name of his God. He's saying that because the Israelites will be made gods in the earth. We will be made like unto Christ. We will be made like our father. We will be, he is putting his heavenly family back together again. That is what is going on in the scripture. That's what the promises are about. And when his family is put back together again, reconciled and made like him, we become the gods of all the other nations. And so all the other people will walk everyone in the name of his God because the elect, the 144,000 will be gods, kings, priests, governors in the earth and will be responsible for governing people. And in my estimation, how it's going to happen is that they're all going to be responsible, you know, for a region. And in that region, that particular member of the elect will be considered a god to those people over whom they govern. But there is a hierarchy. Watch it. The, the Most High God is not replaced or taken out of the way. There is just a hierarchy, like a military hierarchy being set up. That's it for all people of the heathen nations will every one of them will walk in the name of his God. And we, the Israelites will walk in the name of the most high Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, our God forever and ever. You see that we will walk in the name, in the power of our God and the people beneath us will walk in our names. Structure, hierarchy, the same way the hierarchy is spoken of when he says there's God, there's Christ, there are men, there's women, and then there's children. Hierarchy. It is not blasphemous in order to say that the Israelites will become gods. 
and who will be regarded as such. That is not blasphemy. That is the will of the father is for his children to be one with him, to be seen as him, to be revered. He says, I will get you a name and a praise in the earth. I'm going to get you fame. That's what he said to his people. He promises to give his, get his people a, a name and a praise in the earth, to get us fame, to cause us to, to walk in his glory. We are the house of his glory. All right? And it, and it pleases him to do so. So it should please you, Israelites, to admit and to recognize what he said is true. Claim it as being true. And if you are a Gentile who desires to cleave to the house of Israel, it should please you that this is the will of the Father. Because if you do not like the will of the Father, you will not be able to cleave. You will be subject to destruction because every nation that will not bend the knee to his people will be destroyed per his word, not mine. Right? He says, in that day, said the Lord, will I assemble her that halted. That's the uh, the southern kingdom of Judah, right? And I will gather her that is driven out, that is the northern kingdom of the house of Israel, and her that I have afflicted. And I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation. You see that? He didn't say that he's going to throw away his people. That's what Christianity says. The Most High God promises to reconcile his people unto him. And I will make her that halted a remnant and her that was cast off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them. Over who? Her that halted and her that was cast uh, far off. Both houses of Israel. That's what he's talking about. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. The first dominion is the thousand year reign of Christ Yahweh Shai. You see, the promise is for Israel to be given the first dominion, the day of the Lord's rest, the rest for Israel. That's what it's all about. It's about Israel. It is not about the Christian church. It's not about whosoever believes in Christ. That is not what it's all about. It's about whosoever believes in Christ of Israel, but not of the entire earth. Right? And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Who's the kingdom going to come to? The daughter of Jerusalem. That's why the apostles asked Christ, will you again at this time restore the kingdom unto Israel? They knew what they were talking about. They knew what they were asking of him and he didn't correct them. He would have if they were wrong in their understanding. Now, why dost thou cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail, as a woman in labor. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. We, the Negroes in America right now, are chief among the daughter of Zion. We make up the bulk of the daughter of Zion. Not, a, not alone do we make up, but I believe that we make up the, the great majority of those who are considered the daughter of Zion, All right? Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in labor. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city and thou shalt dwell in the field and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. Where shall, shall, shall the, the daughter of Zion be delivered from? from Babylon. So in the latter days, the daughter of Zion, the Israelites should be the bottom feeders of society in Babylon. 
should be the people highly oppressed and afflicted in Babylon. The people at the bottom of the social structure, the bottom of the economic structure, the bottom of the political structure. That is how you find the Israelites in addition to the curses. It tells you where the people are going to be delivered from. So they have to be there when he comes. When Christ returns, the Israelites must be in Babylon. And many people believe and understand that America is Babylon. So America must be the place where many Israelites were taken captive and are still captive in the nation until this day. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. We are still in the hands of our enemies. We shall be redeemed from Babylon. This is the promise in the latter days. This is not a, pro a promise of prophecy fulfilled already. This is still to come. So without a doubt, the biblical Israelites, the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob should still be, be the captive nations of the other nations which took them captive to Babylon and all the other nations. Now also, many nations are gathered against thee that say, let her be defiled and let our eye look upon Zion. See, keeping us beneath them in the nations of our captivities, this is them saying, let her be defiled. They don't care what's happening to the Negroes, to the Blacks in their countries, in their cities in their neighborhoods. They don't care at all. They say, let her be defiled and let our eye look upon Zion. See, they're happy to, to be able to look upon us because when they look at us, they get reminded of the fact that they have the daughter of Zion, that they have the Israelites, they have the children of God in their possession. It is a point of boasting and confidence for them, for them to look at us and get a reminder that they have taken down God's mighty people, that they have subjugated the mighty children of God. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel. They don't. And that's why I'm doing this long series is to try to help many people understand his counsel and to understand his thoughts because they believe incorrectly that he has cast off his people that he intends to throw away his people and to replace them with a new people. But that, that's not his thoughts. That is not his counsel. For he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor. Arise and thresh, aka awaken. See, that's why they're trying to squat and pee, pee all over the, uh, the quote unquote Negro woke movement. They've hijacked it. They've hijacked it. It was our movement. We named it. We surnamed it. We called it what it is. That's where they get it from. They get it from us. And they've hijacked it and they make it all about LGBTQ. LGBTQ plus whatever it is. That's what they made it about. Right? So now anybody who talks about social justice, they call you woke. Anybody who learns the truth about history and learn that the history books are books filled with lies. If you learn about that, then that you're considered woke. If you support, you know, the, the LGBTQ alphabet community, you're woke. They are, they are trying to tarnish the move of God. They're trying to stop everybody from paying attention to God's mighty hand moving in the earth. And they're putting the focus on Satan's weak hand. It's all trickery. Hey, 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 look at me. It's deceptive. It's a decoy set situation to keep us from noticing that God is moving, that God is doing what he said he would do. And keep us looking at, at Satan hijacking prophecy hijacking God's plans, trying to at least. He's, give, he's trying to give the impression 
that he's able to do it in order to soothe his own children who are not comforted by the scriptures because the scriptures say that the children of God will arise and thresh. Right? Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron and I will make thy hoofs brass and thou, the Israelites, shall beat in pieces many people and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. All the people of the world, all the nations will have to bring all of their wealth, all of their stuff to the Israelites. In the latter days, this is the prophecy and promise of God concerning his children, his people in the latter days that Christianity does not want you to know. They do not want you to know. Why? It's because Satan doesn't want you to know it. And Christianity is Satan's religion. Why is Satan going to teach you the truth about God inside of his house? Yeah, those churches, those are Satan's buildings. Those don't belong to God. Your congregations, yeah. Satan's congregations. You're Satan's people. Spouting Satan's doctrines. Satan's belief systems. Satan's hopes and dreams and desires. That's what you're spouting. That's what you're touting. That's what you believe in. That's what you're cleaving to. That is what you're hoping for. And those hopes will be dashed in pieces because they are not of God. You do not know his mind, and you do not understand his counsel. And because of it, you will perish if you are in the Christian church and you are on the fence, jump off of it now. And when you jump off of it, make sure you jump on the right side of it. All right? Run fast, run far, run now. And while you're running, give all praise, honor, and glory to God, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to our father, Yahweh, and to our king, Yahweh Shai. Thank you for joining me today. I pray that you were all edified. And if you were, pay it forward. Each one reach one. Shalom.